Hi, Martin here. Today we're going to do part three of my wire tuck that I've been doing to the engine bay of this 04 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, first part and second part consisted of relocating the battery underneath the back seat and then I also did the wire tuck here on the left side all the wires that run over top of the valve cover. And now today I'm going to remove all of these wires right here. We're going to tuck them and really clean up this side of the engine bay. Alright, well, let's get started. Alright, we're going to take it from this here. To this. And the first things we're going to do is remove this cowl. We're going to be bringing some wires right up and through here and then into this fender. So remove the windshield wipers, this rubber stripping, and this cowl right here. It takes a 15 millimeter socket right here to remove these windshield wipers. The wipers can be a little stubborn to remove. I'm going to use just a little bit of penetrating oil. And then it takes a uh, T30 to remove these little plastic fasteners right here. All right, now with the cowl removed, I'm gonna go ahead and start removing some of the bolts that hold on the front fender. We're going to remove that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove the front tire as well and pull it, pull out the uh, inner fender well. Now before I get too carried away and remove the two bolts or a few bolts that hold on this hinge for the hood, I'm going to have to do that as well. I got to support the hood. I cut this uh, bar that's, a, you know, the appropriate length. There we go. And I also placed a moving blanket up here just in case, you know, this hinge wants to get up here. I don't want it touching that windshield and taking a chance on cracking it. All right, we've got a couple 10 millimeter bolts right under here. Okay. Now there's uh, several of these push type fasteners you need to remove. I like using tools like this. I think I got these from Harbor Freight. bolts up here as well and then you got these two bolts right there now we got a uh, couple bolts Hiding right back here by the fender. Need to pull those out. <laughs> In fact, you just gotta loosen them. Right there, 10 millimeter. And loosen the other one up here. There 
we go. And remove this one 7 millimeter bolt that holds in the headlight assembly. We need to remove the headlight assembly because uh, one of the parts that hold the headlight assembly in is attached to the fender here. There we go. Alright, now with the fender removed, you can see that we've got this channel right here. That's what I, I like about this. I'm going to bring the wiring that we've got coming down through here, up into this cavity up here. And there's another channel, or another hole, right here that goes into this channel. So I'm going to run all the wiring up into here, into this channel, and then pop out. And um, I may use like a cavity right here. This is going to be a good one down here to uh, run the wiring for the ASB brakes. And, you know, this is kind of a build as we go. Uh, this particular wiring right here, this was from a previous video uh, where I added a uh, fan controller, electronic fan controller. And this is, be I did not remove the fender to do this. This was just laying up inside the, uh, above the plastic fender well. But now that I got this fender off, of course I'm going to run it inside this channel. Uh, what's nice about this too, it's very well protected. Should you have a problem with, let's say, a tire explodes, uh, you know, it's going to tear up this inner fender well and stuff like that, that you, you're not going to be damaging any of the wire because it's going to be protected inside here. All right, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start disconnecting all the the wiring, the ABS, brake sensor, purge valve, etc. Get all that undone, start pulling this all back. And uh, we'll go from there. Now to remove this connector off the ABS brakes, you got to lift this part of the connector up. And as you're lifting it up, it is going to release the connector. It can be a little stubborn. There, you can see how it walked back. There we go. They get filled with dirt and makes them hard to pull off sometimes actually, after all the years. Now I got options. We could use this wiring for the most part. Take this and I could come up into this cavity then head down this channel. Now that would be the easier way. But if you really want to hide all these wires, we'll do an actual tuck. I'd like to take those wires back into the inside of the cab of the vehicle, come up through here, drill a hole back into the cab of the vehicle, and then bring those wires up through here, then into this channel. That's going to be harder, but that's the way I'm going to go with this. Now to make that whole thing easier, uh, as far as because I am going to have to drill a hole back here in this cavity and uh, the linkage for the wipers is in the way so I'm just going to remove the whole assembly here there's four 10 millimeter bolts There we go. Love those locking tabs. There we go. Now that really opens it up right there. And we need to drill a hole right back in here. And that gets us inside the cab of the vehicle. There we have it. Most of the wires all removed. 
I got him to that point right there. Okay, one thing about you know doing a wire tuck, most situations, and on this one, you're going to end up taking a longer route than the harness originally took. Uh, now you could add a section of wire in there. Now you're talking two splices to add that section in. And what I really want to do is limit that. So I got another harness out of the same year vehicle and that way I know you know the colors are all going to be the same or should be as long as there wasn't some kind of revision change during the year. Um, and that way I can take a section of this harness, cut it at the appropriate point, and then cut this one at the appropriate point, and we'll make a splice there. Um, and then you saw where I got to drill a hole here in the cowl. I'm going to pull the wiring back in through there and up. And I haven't quite figured out where I'm going to put the splice yet. It's either going to be like right up in here inside the cowl, or I could. Uh, make it so it ends up in here and then by the way I got this at pick apart it's like $22 and change not bad for a whole wiring harness all right I'm gonna start off by getting this part of the harness hooked up again by using the harness that I bought and I cut off more than a chunk that I need and I went ahead and made notes you want to like write down all the colors of the wires that you have here and then verify that it, those colors are the exact same one on the harness you got. That way it's going to make it a whole lot easier when you go to hook everything up. Then get everything plugged in and run it up in this channel. And I want everything to come out right here for now. Well, unfortunately I lost the audio on this portion of it. Uh, what I'm talking about here is having to drill a hole right in that location there. And I'm going to use this grommet. I'm going to show you right there. And I got that out of a uh, Dodge, I believe. And then I used a hole saw and drilled out the center section of the grommet to make it large enough to pass all the cables through and the washer hose as well. All right. Taking a drill and be cutting that out and passing those wire through through there as soon as I get this grommet put in. Using the appropriate size drill or hole saw I should say. It's kind of wore out. Smoking. That's the only thing I knew what I said. Shooting it with some black paint there, on the, especially on that bare metal right there to keep everything from rusting. Fit pretty nice. Okay, I got a portion of the harness completed. This is going to be the part for the ABS brakes. Uh, there's a sensor for the master cylinder and then for the purge valve. Uh, the purge valve itself, I'm actually gonna pull off of the, uh, the fender here, the inner fender, and move it right above the ABS brakes right here. I'm gonna build a small bracket. Now what I'm gonna do, this, I mean, we're gonna see at least this much of the harness. There's really nothing I can do about that. Unless I was willing to move the entire ABS brakes and hide it somewhere. Um, that'd make another video for sure. <laughs> Alright, so what I'm going to do, there's this uh, bump right here in the fender. I'm going to drill a hole through it. And I've got the, this grommet right here that I'm going to place in, in that hole and pass the harness through that. fits pretty nice. Alright, before I put that in there, I'm going to go ahead and get some paint on that so there's no chance of any rust right there. This particular wire right here is for the 
front left um, ABS. Those are the grounds. This is everything else that we have to solder up. there it's gonna go up here just like that okay okay now that we got the grommet installed here right in this section here the metal used to go across so what I want to do is take this harness it's gonna lay up in here like so I cut that out with a hole saw, uh, kind of beat it down so there's no real sharp edges, you know, gave it a nice rounded corner here. Now, using this grommet right here, this is the, the one that was up here in the cowl for the uh, wiper motor. Won't be needing it anymore because those wires are going to come directly into that cavity. I'll show you that in a little bit. Now, I'm going to use this grommet. In fact, I, this is an extra one. This is off the other harness, right here. I cut off the, the tip of that, so I was able to pass the larger harness through there. I'm gonna drill a one and three eighths hole right here. That'll get us into this cavity here, where I can come out this way. And with the other harness coming in here, we're gonna bring both harnesses out here, where I'm gonna make my splice. And then we'll be able to pull it back into here. Okay, I went ahead and shot some black paint on there and in here just to keep anything from rusting. Alright, I'm inside the cab here, pulling this wiring harness back in side, and we'll get it prepared to pull up through the hole that I'm going to have to drill into the cowl. Alright, now one of the one things I want to take care of, I took this, uh, the grommet out where the wires pass through. I didn't really want that there. I mean, it isn't totally unattractive, but I, I, I don't like it. I could do something with that hole, like plug that and fill it up or whatever, and it'd be good. Using a three and three quarter inch hole saw and one eighth inch thick piece of aluminum, I'm not trying to cut all the way through. I want to leave a lip on there, and that lip is going to catch the edge of the hole that we're trying to cover up, and then I'll glue it into place. See, there we go. Pop it out. Perfect. Now with that piece of aluminum cut out and leaving that lip on there as much as I could, you can see it fits in there just perfect, nice and flat. Now I'm going to fill that hole, paint this black, and I'll just glue it into place with some uh, black uh, urethane. Here I'm using a uh, map gas, and these are a, uh, a welding rod, aluminum welding rod you can use for propane or map gas. I do got to get it rather warm, and I'm actually pretty impressed with these. I'll uh, put a link here on down below and maybe up above to an Amazon link where you can get these. There you can see how it you get it hot enough and it'll just kind of melt into place. I was pretty impressed with them. All right, there I got the uh, plate all installed and painted. That looks a lot better than that large grommet. I came out here to pick apart, do a little investigation as far as where I can drill. You know, I don't want to 
screw up my vehicle. You know, drill it a hole and then find out I ran into a wiring harness or whatever. The cowl's been removed. And that wiring that I want to run up is going to go through this cavity right here. And then I drilled this hole right there. Went inside the cab, which it did. Now, the dash has been removed. This looks horrible. Um, but with the dash removed, you can clearly see where the hole is. And there it is. As you can see, there is a wiring harness that runs relatively close. So that's just something that I got to keep in mind. Make sure that's out of my way when I drill that hole through there. So I'm about to drill that hole I just showed you on that 99 WJL from Pick Apart. Now I didn't practice what I preached. I didn't reach up there and make sure that harness was out of my way. I just assumed, okay, it's laying up flat against the you know, firewall, just like the other one was. But right now, I am coming dangerously close to that harness because it is actually sitting right below. It isn't fastened to the firewall like it was on the 99. Now I'm going to pop through. And I... Whoa, I came really close right there. Okay, I got the whole wiring harness, everything that's got to run back up there. Um, ready to go here. I got it all taped together. And I got some loom here. This stuff right here it's kind of like that Chinese finger torture thing um, you know where it gets tight as you pull on it I actually got this off a, a Dodge uh, Ram truck this was uh, just the protective coating they put over the cruise control cable and it was really easy to remove I, I like this you know gives it a nice finished look so I'm gonna slide that over this harness and then um, We'll get this harness pulled up through that hole that I drilled in that uh, cowl area there. All right, here you can see I got it slid on right there. There's the grommet right here. I got this uh, hole line here lowered down from the hole above. Now I'll just tie that onto the end of the harness and pull this up. All right, we'll get this harness pulled up here. There, I got it. Okay, next I'm gonna pull out the wires that need to stay up here, like for the wiper motor. And I also got a few other wires. I got a uh, 12 o'clock labs, um, it was made by them. It's a device that corrects the uh, speedometer for this. Um, I actually got it hid, well, right there. I'm gonna have it tucked in right there. I gotta wire that in. And then the rest will move on through this uh, hole over here. And then we'll get everything wired right here. Okay, I've got this section of the harness cut to a length. This is for the wiper motor. And I've already soldered a couple of them together here. Make sure you slide your heat shrink on, uh, you know, beforehand. You don't want to forget that. And it helps if you got one of these little devices here help hold the wiring for you. You really need that third and fourth hand. I pre-tinned all the wires. Just 
just like that. Here we go. Got all five. Just shrink this down. This portion of the harness is done. All right. I got the uh, harness up to this point. I got the braid on it. And I've got it ready to go through this channel here. I got a piece of mule line right there, as you can see, as I pull this. So we're going to pull it to this point and then the rest of it then down to this point here, what needs to go down there. All right, I get this tied on, we'll get it pulled in. Right, ma making sure you're matching up color for color and don't forget your heat shrink I'm using a self adhesive heat shrink it has a uh, like a glue inside very uh, I'd recommend it for this application if there's any possibility of any water in there. I pre-tin all the wires and this looks like a mess right now once you get it all soldered together you'll see that it comes together and it looks all right. Okay, here I'm working on one of the ABS sensors that go to each wheel. And I'm trying to make each loop the same length, but not necessarily putting the splice in the same location. Otherwise, you end up this very, you know, uh, bulky spot in the harness. Leave yourself enough to uh, wire there for like about a half inch overlap. And you'll notice these uh, ABS sensor wires have a twist to them. So try to keep the twist in the cable as much as possible. I imagine that's to prevent any kind of crosstalk from one pair to another. Here I am pre tinning all the wires. I do that on each one and then when you go to solder them together it makes it very easy to bond them now when it comes time to solder them together you basically don't have to add any solder you're just uh, heating up both wires and then you let go and then give it a few seconds to cool and there you go it's a little hard without the little alligator clip thing that I had uh, there wasn't a good place to put it I would have had to build some kind of little table or something right there you can see I'm having some difficulty not to mention the heat traveling down the wire 
uh, makes it hard to hang on to. All right, we'll slide the heat shrink up into place. Now you're going to watch as I, uh, I put the twist back into the wire as much as I can. I actually kind of over twisted it and now I'm spreading that twist out just like that. All right, I'm down to the last wire here. As you can see, it's not looking too bad. So now with the harness, you know, it's all pretty much the same length. Now, when I pull this back into here, I'm going to pull a loop down into here. Ready to pull it back into this channel. Uh, the ground wire, I just drilled the hole right here. Put a quarter 20 bolt. Took off the paint right there, so I got a good ground. I'll go ahead and shoot that with uh, some black paint or whatever to just keep it from rusting. And over here. Did the same thing as far as getting all the wires soldered up, wire for wire, or color for color. And uh, I put this uh, loom on it up into here. And I'm going to pull some of this length back into this channel right here. All right. All right, before I throw the fender back on it, here we are, one last look. That's for the ABS right there, purge valve and the brake master cylinder. Then all the wires are shoved back in here through that hole. Went ahead and painted around that. And I got the cowl back in place. Oh yeah. got left there is the uh, hood release cable and do something with that but definitely a lot cleaner I think this looks great all right well there you have it I think it looks really nice very clean. The only thing I got left to do is uh, figure out something to do with the uh, hood latch cable here. I'd like to make that go away as well. All right. Well, I hope you found that helpful and informative. If you did, I appreciate the thumbs up. And if you never subscribed to me before, hit that subscribe button right down there and that little bell symbol right next to it. And that way you get notifications of my upcoming videos as I release them. And I'm also an Amazon affiliate. Please check out the links down below and of any of the tools or products that I used to make in this video. I'll have links there and you can actually do all your Amazon shopping right through one of those links. All right, thanks again for watching.